Hey guys, what's up? Cole from TechInform.us, and in today's video, I wanted to give an overview of iOS 5 and tell you guys exactly what is new in it. So firstly, you can see that the home screen pretty much looks the same except for a few new icons. Those icons being newsstand and reminders. Now if you launch reminders, uh, basically it's just a little reminder tab. You can make new reminders, blah, 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 done. We got, we got to do something with hue, so reminders. It's pretty simple. Newsstand. Now this functions exactly like iBooks, just it's a little newsstand sitting in your menu bar instead of its own application. I don't know if they're going to transfer iBooks to be looking like that as well. If they do, I think it'd be a good move. Now one major change I noticed right away was on the iPhone, they changed it to the way the iPod Touch has always been, with two different applications for your iPod, one for music and one for videos. Now that's not an issue, uh, seeing as I don't really watch many videos on my iPhone, but I'm trying to figure out why they would do that. I mean, you can make a folder with music and videos in it, but why not just keep the iPod app? Now, this is just an early beta of iOS 5, you know, this is beta 1 of iOS 5. So they could change it in the future, they usually change a lot of stuff with these iOS 5 betas, or betas of these new firmwares before their final release. But, uh, that just seemed a little strange to me. Uh, you never know. Apple usually has something up their sleeve. So before I launch certain applications, let's go into settings and see what new settings we see in settings. So I'm just going to go down one by one here and let you know what's new in each. So starting at wallpaper, uh, why would I start here? Well, I wanted to let you know that wallpapers, the stock wallpapers, do not show up in iOS 5 betas. In iOS 4 early betas, they didn't either. Not sure why. Apple just doesn't include anything but the stock wallpaper in the betas. Going down to general, you can see in the about tab uh, it looks pretty much the same in the software update tab this is a completely new tab basically this is over the air updates and since I'm on a firmware that's not even technically released yet uh, of course there's no software updates but you can software update over the air which is always cool under usage they completely redid this app uh, it gives you how much each app is megabytes wise kilobytes wise tells you how much you've used, it tells you how much you have available. Total storage, your cloud storage, your battery percentage, your usage, your current talk periods, whatever. So basically that gives you all your information about your usage. Under iTunes Sync, you can now sync from your phone. So basically, since I have it connected, uh, I don't have it right now, but uh, as you can see, Sync will resume when Colton Fry's MacBook Pro is available. So when I plug this in, I can then, this button will highlight, and I could press it, and it would auto sync instead of having to press the button inside iTunes. I believe everything else in general is the same it is on 4.3.3. There is a new tab here called iCloud. Under iCloud, you just choose what you want to sync to your iCloud. Kind of cool just pretty basic. Under mail contacts and calendar you can now choose how many recent messages you want to show above I think I think the last one was uh, 100 or 200 now you can go up to 1000 which is always good. You now have a Twitter tab which is completely new because Twitter is integrated into iOS now. There is now a FaceTime tab which allows everything that's on the iPod touch to be displayed on the iPhone so basically the way FaceTime works on the iPod touch it now works on the iPhone you can set up a secondary email. I'm not going into there right now because it shows my phone number. Under Safari they changed a few things. Um, I was informed that this was on the last version of Safari, but they now have private browsing. I don't know if that was on 4.3.3 or not. Someone informed me it was, but I'm not sure. Uh, everything else in Safari, I believe, is the same. Under Messages, there is a new app called iMessage. Uh, apparently, it's not in Beta 1. However, it is uh, coming, I would believe, or it's going to be worked into the Messages app. Uh, basically, it's just called iMessage. Apple talked about it in their keynote. But, yeah, so that's kind of cool, I guess. Music is the same. Video is the same. Photos, you can now uh, do photo stream. I keep that off. There's no real point for it for me. You can now... Um, Toggle whether you want to keep the original uh, photos for high dynamic range images. Under notes, you can now choose between three text settings, which is always good. Ch options are always good. Under store, you can choose where you want to automatically download. So say you uh, download an app on your computer, you didn't sync your phone, your phone will automatically know uh, to download that app. And I also have it toggled so it will download it over cellular data. So. That's kind of cool since I have 5 gigs. And then all your other applications are the exact same thing. Another huge new feature in iOS 5 is notifications. 
Uh, this is your notification panel. Gives you your current weather. I would believe that would change to rain or snow or sun or whatever it was where you were. You have all your stocks scrolling up there. Uh, when you receive a text message, it shows up down here. Email shows up down here. Everything shows up right here. Same with your lock screen. On your lock screen, all your information, all your text messages, all your data shows up right here on your lock screen. Now I took a few screenshots for the setup process of iOS 4 while I was setting it up. Basically, with iOS 4, you can now set up from the phone. So as you can see in here, this is just the setup process. Scrolling through, so slide to setup. This is what you saw when you first updated to iOS 5. I didn't even have it plugged into the computer at this point in time, which is always cool. You have your language, country region, set up iPhone, set up as new phone, restore from cloud, or restore from iTunes. Set up from iCloud, thank you. And then this was the notification screen. So, just so you know, kind of cool, you can take screenshots of the setup process. I figured that out about one second into iOS 5. In the camera app, you also have a grid option which is always good. Now there are a lot of new features I can't even go over in this video. I think there were 200 brand new features in iOS 5, but I tried to cover some of the major ones. Question is, are you going to get a developer to register you your UDID or are you a developer already? Are you going to get iOS 5? Do you think it's worth it? Do you think it's important? Uh, I believe it's a very stable OS for a first beta. I believe it is a very good OS. I believe I think it's going to be a great upgrade come this fall when everyone gets iOS 5. And I'm excited for all these features to be turned on. I mean, now of course it's a developer preview right now, so not all these features are going to be turned on right away. However, a lot of them actually are turned on. It's surprising how much Apple has already turned on for the developers. So with all this said, I hope you enjoyed the video. Follow me on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash quote 4595. Check out the website, techinform.us, where we have great tech related content posted every day. Check out my daily vlogs, youtube.com forward slash Colts vlogging. And I'll see you guys in the next video.